day four of Comic Con, and uh, some people are still alive and kicking. Uh, I just happened to run into an old friend from DS9 Days who's doing quite well, even if he is about to go and uh, engender his life in the Starship Smackdown. Anyway, here's Robert Hewitt Wolf, everybody. Testing, testing, one, two, three. One, two, three. Robert. I can't believe I ran into you, but how great it is to see you again, man. Uh, it's, it's fun, man. It's uh, one of the fun things about Comic-Con is running into old friends. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, congratulations on the gates. Thanks. How's it? Everything going well? It's you said, great. You had a short startup season, right? Yeah, we, we're doing a 13-episode summer run. Um, uh, Richard Haddam and Grant Charbo created the show. I'm consulting producer. I wrote episode uh, 7, and I just wrapped episode 10 uh, like a week ago. Yeah. And we're in post on both of those right now. And, and things are coming along really well creatively. It's a, it's a really fun show. It's it's not what people. It's it's much more sort of serious than, than the promotions actually led people to believe. It's not quite Desperate Housewives with vampires. It's more. It's a little more tense than that. It's yeah. got a little more edge than people were expecting. So where am I looking here? I don't know where I'm looking. And you? No, and me. Yeah, there yeah, you you're go. fine. Okay. It's fine. I uh, it's years of television experience has not taught me where to look when being interviewed on camera. Well, this is the uh, underground end of things anyway. So. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. Very, very no, now, um, with a you. It sounds like it's a good group to work with. Is it? We, we have an amazing writing staff. It's uh, like Richard Haddam, uh, like I said, who did uh, a Lost Room and Miracles. Grant Charbo is he's done a lot of uh, TV movies. He did, did The Mountain. He worked on uh, Jake 2.0. Um, also, uh, Gabby Stanton from Vampire Diaries oh, yeah. and Moonlight yeah. and Grey's Anatomy and every other show you could possibly mention. And um, uh, Scott Nimmerfro, who was on uh, Pushing Daisies, and this uh, guy Jared Romero, who's uh, fairly new but very, very talented writer. Gab and Scott actually had some really early credits on one of the Trek series. That's right. I believe that Gab had a story on Deep Space, Space Nine with her uh, former writing partner, Harry, and I believe that. Scott did a Voyager or something like, like that. that. It's, Enterprise? I don't. Know. It's hard to. Uh, it's hard to get away from. It. Yeah. Well, you know, when you do uh, over 500 hours of yeah. television or whatever the current count is, you yeah. know better than me. It's yeah, like yeah. pushing 600. Where, are, where was it? I think it's closing on seven. Closing on 700 yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people got their start on Star Trek. <laughs> I keep running into people who are like, I pitched to you when I was a baby writer, and you were tough. Yeah. But it was good tough. I'm like, yeah. all right, sorry. Okay, good. Didn't mean to scare you. Good. <laughs> you're not stalking me now, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not out for revenge, right? Your, your life has gone well, good. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though when you talk about a happy place to work, I, I mean, that's the way DS9 was. Yeah. I know, the guys at Ira and everybody made sure it was... Yeah, that was an amazing <laughs> staff. And, and, and like to this day, when I tell people that there were only five of us and we did 26 a year, People just, their jaws drop because nobody works at that pace anymore. It's like, I did two episodes out of 13. Yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> Want me to do two more? That endless, yeah, people see those endless lists of names on the opening, you know, the opening credits, and then a few at the end and, and think, wow. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, all the treks were done, uh, not so much. Lean, nope. mean fight machines, those yeah. trek writing rooms. They were all much smaller than you would think and, and very, you know, very fast-paced. So, you know, when there was a clinker or two a season, it kind of uh, changes your... <laughs> well, there was always going to be at least There's one. All, yeah. I mean, to this day, I still tell the story of, like, there was an episode that I worked on with Iron. I got in. I, we were five days from shooting, and I walked yep. into his office, and I said, this episode does not work. It does not work. <laughs> we need to now just throw it out, start over. I'll work weekends. I'll work nights. We'll work straight through. And I was like, too late. <laughs> Because <laughs> it was right. I mean, we were already working on right. two more episodes down right. the road. And right. to, to right. jump back into that one at that point was... What was it? What was it? I'm not going to say. Oh. <laughs> Let he who is without sin. Hmm? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, it's I, not, everything is, you know, 20 years of dust has settled. Everybody's... Yeah, yeah, no. It was, we're at, academically at studying day, everything. It wasn't a bad episode. It was fun and goofy yeah, yeah, and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just, you know, it wasn't one of them. And, you know, there are some things we could have done better in script, and there were production issues. We went down to Malibu, and it was like right. cloudy and cloudy and raining, and everyone was supposed to be in bathing suits, and that wasn't working out. And, you know, it is what it is. What's but your best? Yeah. What's your best uh, takeaway from, or I guess memory, I would say, from DS9's years? And just or being in the writers' room with the guys. Yeah. Ron and Renee. Yeah, and I mean, Ira there's no specific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ron Moore, Renee 
Echeveria, Ira Bear, Hans Beimler, me, just doing our craft, working the stories, yeah, breaking yeah. them down, hanging out, shooting the bull. And that was that was kind of a growth thing for you, right? You were still it was a my second a newbie. job. Yeah. My, well, my first job was just one episode of Next Generation, so it was my first staff job. Right. I learned so much from Ira and Michael Piller. I mean, uh, yeah. Really great and my, Michael yeah, Michael. Piller. Rest his soul. Yeah, yeah. rest his soul. Yeah. Um, Helps a lot of, help tons of people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the number of people who Michael gave their first staff job to, if you list those people, that is a very impressive <laughs> list. It's like, have, you know, in, in sports they talk about coaching trees and how this yeah. coach gave that coach his first job and right. how many people Bill Belichick has got, like Michael Piller has trained more show trained more showrunners right. than I think any other writer in Hollywood who history. Are out there, I would have to who say. are out there running today, yeah. Yeah, out there writing shows right running shows right now today. And that's part of the, aside from all the science fiction and the fandom and, and the fun and you know the googie stuff of Star Trek, that the, the industry the industry landmarks of Star Trek are kind of amazing and that's one of them. The legacy yeah. on the writing side. Legacy on the writing side, the the production people who worked for so long and got so good at everything, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. They, the, the quality, that maintaining that quality at that pace for that many. I mean, there was a time when we were making 52 episodes of Star Trek a yeah, year. Yeah. You know? Plus a movie. Right. You know? Every couple of years, Every squeeze, couple a, movie years, squeeze a movie in there. Every couple of years, squeeze a movie in there, too. Yeah. And, and, you know, <laughs> that pace is, is not a pace that people do anymore. And again, with the size of the stats, how tight everyone was, how hard we worked, how the machine was so... And I'm using machine in a positive way. How right. that entire the well oiled the machine. well oiled machine that was the Star Trek production, all Rick Berman and all his guys and David Livingston and everybody like that who yeah, just yeah. made that show work all the time. And that was that was really an amazing experience. Yeah, yeah. Now between DS9 and the Gates, what did you what did I you created, uh, Oh I, I developed from notes by Gene Roddenberry a show called Andromeda, which ran right, five years, right, hundred and ten sure episodes. I helped launch with Ira and Renee the 4400, right? Uh, which went, which was a four-year run. I came back. I did the first six. And it was amazing after the 4400 came and went. How many uh, similar shows? Yeah, seemed yeah to be it was a very up. seminal show in a yeah, lot of ways. Yeah. People with powers. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normal yeah. people without costumes, but right. with powers. Yeah. Right. Um, developed a show called Dresden Files with Hans right. Meimer. We only made 12 episodes on Sci-Fi, but it's fun. And now I'm on a show called The Gates, which is on ABC, right. which is a show about uh, edgy <laughs> suburban urban vampires in a gated community and the people who must deal with them. And it's not just vampires. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the gates. I was going to say, besides the vampires. Besides the vampires. The vampires are just like the the, you, the first in the freaking teaser, you go like, okay, there's a vampire. But they, by the end of like the third episode, you're like, oh my god, there's this, there's a vampire, there's, a, there's witches, there's werewolves, there's a freaking succubus. I mean, you know, we have all kinds of craziness. It's fun. Yeah, some really interesting zoning on that uh, gated community. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> quite the contrary. The humans are the ones who are, you know, the, the regular people are the ones who are the disadvantaged the minute, citizens yeah. in some ways because they don't know what's going on. Anyway. So, yeah, Very tune good. in. It's a, it's a fun ride. Like I said, I wrote episode seven. And just so we get that Comic-Con flavor, you're going off to do what now? I am going <laughs> off to do, I am a panelist on Starship Smackdown, the geekiest panel in all of Comic-Con. Yep. If you've never experienced it, I believe you can experience it on YouTube or, you know, <laughs> uh, but it is basically a bunch cool. of very uh, experienced, mostly writers, mostly writers in sci-fi uh, television, arguing about what starship would beat what starship in a battle. And it's a single elimination, 16 c tournament. Oh, it's brutal, huh? Yeah, hour and a half. And uh, <laughs> I will not say that it's the most cogent analysis of the actual strength and weaknesses of each ship, otherwise Serenity would never win. But uh, Ooh, right. it has no guns. Uh, right, it has no guns. It has no guns. I'm not. I'm not being prejudicial <laughs> here. There are no guns on that ship. <laughs> not, not even a missile. And when they do, they duct tape them on, and they're on yeah, there for a no. minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can't argue that that can be an Imperial star star destroyer, but but somehow it often does. Somebody will give it a good go, though. Uh, it's called pandering to the audience. No offense to the brown coats, but, yeah, but yeah. they're being nice to you. Yeah, and so anyways, yeah. it's a pity vote. You're showing Just your so you geek know. cred. You're showing pity, your geek cred big time here, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, thanks a lot for dropping by, man. Yeah, it was fun. I'll let you get off to the big battle. Oh, yeah. Okay, and we'll be watching the gates. Yes, watch the gates. Thank you.